I'm out here. With my cousin Josh. We are on like my third bear hunt for the season. It's already August 19th, so spent the first half of the month not hunting because I had to do other stuff. So we are exploring new country because wildfires kind of took away plan A and plan B. So so we're just gonna hike up to this random vantage point that looks good on Onyx. Sit there, glass. If we see something, we see something. If we don't, <laughs> that's it, I guess. That's pretty much the whole strategy for this hunt. Explore new country, glass new country, and hoping we get lucky along the way. You wanna see a moose? No, he's on that little ridge across. It's a nice bull. <clears throat> Whoa. Yeah. That's huge. That's a nice bull for sure. One of the nicer ones I've seen up here. <clears throat> At first I saw the body and I was like, oh, that's a bear. And then I saw the antlers I was like, oh, dang it. How far? He's on that, you see that top ridge right there? Yeah. He's like 100 yards down. Might be a little. You should see him. You saw with their binos? Mm hmm. Oh well, no, I saw him through the spotting scope. I was just glassing with the spotting scope. But go to like the highest peak of that one to the right and then just go down. You should see it in your binocular. Yeah, that's way far. I didn't even approach this one as a bear. Just walk and walk down the ridge, honestly. We hiked up probably about two miles. We just got to this little clearing on this road and there's a couple nice little spots that we can glass. So I just figured. Let's just stop here for a bit and just kind of, you know, really pick apart all these open areas. That way, if there was a bear in the opening, we wouldn't miss it because there's a difference between sitting down like this and taking your time glassing something and just walking, throwing up your binos, scanning and just moving on. A lot of times, if you're just doing that walk, scan, walk, scan type of technique, if an animal is not right in the opening, you're probably going to miss it. If he's slightly covered by bushes, there's no way you're gonna see that animal. So that's why sometimes, even though I'm not to my desired spot, I like to just, you know, sit down and last for 20, 30 minutes, sometimes even an hour. And while we did that, I spotted the first animal of the trip, which was a nice bull moose. I don't have a moose tag, so all we can do is watch. But that is good progress. We just gotta find a bear now so we are glassing quite a bit of ways so I'm just using my spotting scope and that way I'm not second guessing myself in the binocular if it's a stump or a bear that blue grouse would make for a delicious lunch or dinner but season's not open yet so we're not after grouse So if you don't know what a grouse is, never seen one, a grouse is just these tiny little chickens in the mountains and when they fly, their wing makes that flapping noise, loud flapping noise in. If it catches you off guard, it'll startle you just fine. This casing is really busted. Um, I don't know, it looks like someone might have stepped on it. Browns are expensive, so this is like, what, $10?
I might be somewhat of a gear junkie, but let me tell you guys, when I come across something cool, I just got to share it with you guys. So this thing, I got it earlier this year. And this right here is made by a guy by the name of John. And he has this company. It's called Kestrel Glassing Systems. And this is what he calls his Kestrel Monopod. This is one of the slickest pieces of gear I've tested lately. So it doesn't look all that fancy. So what it is, is it's basically just a rod, right? So you can fold it in half and make it compact so you can carry it. But when you use it, you open it and it's held by this bungee and just put it in like that. And then up here at the top, this is also held by a bungee. That way you can like slide this up and down like this. And there's also a lock right here. And if you lock it, then it can't slide up and down. But obviously you just loosen it and it slides up and down. And there's a couple different variations of this monopod because of different types of binoculars out there. But for example, this is the Vortex Razor UHD. And so with this particular binocular design, you have a thread right in between the two eyepieces of your binocular. So with this little piece of metal right here, you can see right in here, this little gap right here, you just simply put this rod in and it'll kind of just hold its place. So just slide it in. Once you have your binoculars attached to this, you just put the monopod in a good solid spot on the ground and you can just slide this up and down depending on your height and you can just glass and once you have your binocular looking where you want to look just simply lock this now the binoculars are staying stationary and you simply just glass and this allows for a much more stable platform for you to glass versus you know trying to hold your binocular steady with just your hands so this thing I've only been testing it out for a couple months, but I'm just telling you, this thing is pretty, it's pretty legit. We are currently dwelling in that midday vibe. Sun's high, it's getting warm out. It's kind of funny because this plant right here, it's called bear grass, literally bear grass. I don't know why it's called bear grass because I've never seen a bear eating this or a bear doing anything with this grass right here. There's bear grass all over these hillsides and there's zero bears to show for it. So I don't know. Not a lot of glassing spots, but at least looks decent. bags in here got my water bladder right there I brought an extra trail cam just in case and I just got a sandwich for lunch, a bunch of granola bars not granola cliff bars apple portable charger power raid right there trekking poles tripod glass and monopod it is pretty chilly so I do have my sleeping bag and then I also have my backup sleeping bag right there and then 
also have my down jacket just in case it gets really, really cold. So I'm gonna get in here and get to bed. Well, it's like 5.50. I drove up to the trailhead and looks like a lot of good glassing area. So we're gonna try to get high and then go on from there. Already saw the first animals of the day, the unique and elusive cattle, so it's always a good sign. surprised if we don't see anything I mean it is pretty like advanced level of glassing here too it's like, yeah, it's yeah you definitely gotta really take your time all right well we got to our glassing knob pulled off of the road just kind of found this little point here and got a pretty decent view of a lot of good country it's a pretty pretty advanced glassing area because there's a lot of burns but there's so many trees in the way there's just a lot of obstacles that can be hiding a bear so we're just gonna post up here and really just take our time picking apart everything because we've got literally like miles of just glassing so we're just gonna sit here hopefully we see something it looks really good so Looks promising.
just walloped him. Absolutely dumped him. Gonna walk back and get my pack. Oh my goodness, dude. That is awesome. That's as clean as a kill gets, guys. Just no suffering for that bear. Just straight dead. Perfect. Dude, I dropped it too. You want to watch your kill shot? What? You want to watch your kill shot? Yeah. Dang it, it's like as soon as I went to, because he was kind of going out of screen. Oh. So as soon as I went to like move, it's just like boom. But then, ish. Dude, I'm freaking proud of you, dude. Dude, thank you. Dude, no problem. Thank man. you for the help, dude. Oh. So, we got out of the truck. We waited around to like four ish. Um, kind of hiked in this flat, flattish road, like a mile. And Samong was saying, you know, you know, we come up here and the road kind of ends and it can be a good spot to glass for the night because the sun sets and it kind of goes into shadow. And we come around the corner right here and I'm getting my pack unclipped and Smong's like, bear, right there. And we look up on the hill and there's a bear, like beautiful, big, big old brown looking bear. Um, and so <clears throat> we kind of figure out game plan. He's just going at the huckleberries and we were like 300 yards. 280 yards and so I want I, I wanted to get up to like 250 so I snuck up and got right up on this little knob <clears throat> it was 237 yards and kind of just watched him for like five ten minutes make sure I just had the perfect shot I wanted ranged it about 35 times and uh, made sure my MOA is dialed right in and then he turned broadside and pulled the trigger and he just went rolling down the hill so I got a second round in, we're about to go walk up, but I I think he was done after that first shot. Oh yeah. But oh man, I'm so stoked. Yeah. Gu guess the distance on the bear when I shot. Before I shot, I dialed it into my sight. Uh, 237. 237. No way. To the yard. That Two, is a long shot. 237.0 yards. <laughs> Did you get up to the bear? No, we're giving it like 10 or 15 minutes and we're glassing because Samong's got a tag too. Hmm? Are you going to cut it up there yeah. or cart it out or what? Yeah, we'll skin it, we'll quarter it and I'm going to cut it up, you know, so we can cut the hide so I can get a cape and, or get the, you know, so we can rug it out. Yeah. Because, oh, anyways, I thought you'd get a kick out of 237. That is awesome. I couldn't okay, believe I'll, it. <laughs> I'll send you a picture. Rest. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. That's lung blood, Nate. Nate. Huh? That's lung blood. Lung blood? Yeah. It's bubbly. Yeah. That's bud. Oh, he's not as big as I thought. So oh, just wait. They always look bigger. Trust me, Nate. Good shot, yeah. This perfect shot. Trust me, this is a good. This is a good bear. He's not the biggest of all, but he's he's a good bear. Hey, for a first bear, dude. I don't know what else. I am so stoked. That's awesome. Congratulations, Nate. Thank you so much. Oh, not a problem. It is deceiving, though, isn't it? Yeah, bears are hard to judge, but trust me, this is. Just wait till we put them on our backpacks. Yeah. Yes, sir, Nate. <laughs> it's a boar, it looks like. Yep, it's a boar. I'm stoked. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be a lot of work. Yeah, that's uh, find a place to. It's a labor of love. Oh, yeah. All right, let's put our packs down and take some photos. Let's do it. Oh yeah. Pass through too, dude. What? Full pass through, dude. Yeah. That 308 165 green did a did a good job. Did work on him. Alrighty, folks. Here we are. 
my buddy Nate's first ever bear in his life. Crazy thing, this is his first year hunting bear. True. And this is your first actual trip for bear. Yeah. Yeah. So all three. He's tasted bear meat before. Right? Oh yeah. And you said you love I, it. Yeah. If, well, if, if I don't, if I don't eat it, I don't shoot it. So exactly. So when Nate told me that, I was like, me and Nate, we're gonna click along because I, I, I'm totally with that mindset. It's like if you're not gonna eat it, you don't kill it. We don't want to do too much talking because you guys saw how the hunt went down because that sun is dipping it and is. <laughs> <laughs> we have to completely process this bear pack it out back to the truck and so that's it anything you want to say how, how was the hunt oh uh, a dream yeah. it was it was really cool i couldn't have picked it you know just yeah. just a little bit of struggle involved which is always good you know yep. two days of sitting behind the glass and not seeing a thing bear wise yeah. seeing de a few deer and stuff but uh you know, it's a, it's a little bit different when you sit behind and you hunt hard for a couple of days and then you get rewarded versus yeah. if you just come right out and get one, so. Oh yeah. We're gonna rug it out, take out all the meat, and we gotta get started because no more wasted time. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, folks. Well, you guys can see it's pitch black. So right now we are done with everything. So I'm gonna get my pack loaded up with meat. Same with Nate. Uh, we just got my hunter orange there. Just want to show you guys what we have so nate wants to rug out this bear so we did our best to rug out this bear so you guys can see it there's the rug just trying to let it air dry while we just kind of sit here and then down here this is the remains of everything so this is its gut pile and then you guys can see there just the carcass you guys can see right here this is the two hind quarters i'm gonna pack that out and then these are the two front shoulders. I'm also gonna pack that out. Nate is packing out the hide with like the back strap and all those other meats. Oh. All right. All right, Stone Glacier, do not fail me. Oh man. <laughs> gotta do some final stuff and we're good to go got the two hindquarters and the, and the two shoulders on there just kind of sandwiching my bag all together just whatever works at this point it's a pretty heavy load right up here the man himself using the osprey to the best of its abilities there's the noggin of that bear so yeah that's pretty much it we're gonna have to hike out of here so we're gonna load up and start our midnight hike out of here. Should be a fun one, I, I'm feeling. Any thoughts? I'll let you know when we get back to the truck. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. That is no joke. Dang. What's your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> My thoughts are that uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting brutal. getting to the road. I think it's time to upgrade your backpack. I think you're right. Still gotta take those bad boys too. All right. Is there a road down there? I don't know. I'm, I may try and cut across. Yeah, just don't make sure you don't cross low. We just made it out of all that thick stuff. If you've never hunted and you've never done a pack out, a heavy pack out on a big game animal in the pitch black, it sucks, but I encourage you to go try it because it's just something else. It's heavy, but it's so rewarding at the same time. So pack is heavy. All loaded up. Now I just gotta get back to the trucks. How you doing, Nate? Well, it's midnight and it's like 45 out and I'm dripping sweat. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> This is the best part. 
Oh. Woo. I think let's put some ice on top. That's it for tonight. We're gonna get some shut eye. We really need it at this point, so I'll see you guys in the morning. morning folks so today we're just gonna cook up a little breakfast and head out today we're gonna be utilizing some of that bear fat that we got from Nate's bear yesterday and if you've never done this before if you've never seen this before not familiar with bear or bear hunting bear is a very useful animal not only do you eat the meat but the bear fat itself is actually used for quite a lot of things so like right now I just took off a little chunk of fat and I cut it into cubes and I'm actually rendering down that fat and it's turning into literally oil, just like vegetable oil, olive oil. So you can literally cook, you can uh, use it for leather, for your boots and stuff like that. But right now we're just gonna use it as some cooking oil, cut up some bare back strap and we're just gonna cook a little bit and eat that for breakfast. But this is literally one of the things you can do with bare fat right here. It's You just render it down and a small chunk of bare fat will give you quite a bit of oil. So right now, I'm just waiting for this to completely render down and we're gonna throw in some meat in there and it's gonna be good. This is bear meat cooked in bear fat. What do you think? It's so good. Yeah. We don't have spoons and forks, so we're eating with a knife. Oh, it tastes so good. Mm. I'm just saying guys, you've never had bear meat cooked in bear fat, you're missing out. I wish we made a little bit more. <laughs> it's so good. That is good, huh? Would you see just some pepper? Montreal steak seasoning. Mm. Right there. Intended for bear use. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's delicious. No cap. That is delicious. This is probably the most simple way you can cook bear meat, but satisfaction is beyond. I mean, all we did was cut a piece off of the back strap. It had meat, it had fat already on it. Yep separated the two cooked the fat down and then cooked the meat in the fat yeah literally and you just threw seasoning on the meat it's as simple as it gets guys i'm just saying there's a lot of people out there that don't like bear meat all i'm saying is if you don't like bear meat you're probably cooking it wrong 